们 reset 再从头开始一次哦。Hello everyone. My name is Rajendra Deshpande, and I am I am working as assistant professor in KLS Cooked Top Technology India. Today I will be delivering a talk on deceptive security using Python. So these are the contents which we are going to discuss briefly today: introduction to deception, then to deception tools, what is web trap, and second one is devil hunters, then third is our experiment how we developed a deception tool. And finally, the conclusion. Let's start with a scenario. So the scenario will help us understand how deception works. Imagine you are passing through an unknown street at midnight, and you find that some antisocial elements are following you. To save yourself from them, you start running and look for safe places to hide. On the way, you will find a good person and request him to help you. He hides you in his place to protect you. When these antisocial elements visit a good person's place and inquire about you, the good person misguides them and redirects them to some other place in order to protect you. This is exactly how deception works. In this analogy, you are the resources to be protected. Antisocial elements are the hackers who want to get access to the resources, and a good person is a deception technique that protects the resources from hackers by making them fall into the trap. Now, this slide explains the basic idea behind deception and how it works. Now, deception is a technique where hackers methods will be used as security mechanism. So, it is also known as phishing by phishers. So, what do we mean by phishing by phishers? Is let's understand how phishing works first. So, let's assume that there is a uh, website of a bank. Okay. So, what hackers do is they recreate the user interface of a bank, so which looks like a real website, but in reality, it is not a real website. In in the backend, they use the interface. To collect your data and to carry out further attacks. So this is known as phishing. So on the server side, we are going to use similar techniques to protect our resources. So deception is a military tactic used by both attackers and defenders. So in our case, we are using deception for defending our resources. Now there is a diagram here. It shows how deception works. Now here there are two types of users. One is benign user and second one is malicious user. Both the users are presented with the common user interface. Now based on their activity, they will be classified as benign user or malicious user. If they are classified as benign user, then uh, he will be given to the access to the real system. If the user is classified as malicious user and if he is unauthorized. Then he will be redirected to the deceptive system. In deception, there are two types of deception. One is uh, active deception, and second one is passive deception. In active deception, inaccurate information is intentionally provided to the hackers to fall for the trap. In passive deception, incomplete information will be provided to the hackers. So what intruders or hackers will try is to try to gain all the information and fall for the other trap. Now, deception can also be classified as client side deception and server side deception. So basically, client side deception is used by hackers. So it is used to deceive the users or people. Then server side deception. Is used by security providers. This is used to deceive the hackers. Now, better deception technique is use the combination of active deception and passive deception. That is, provide both inaccurate and incomplete information to the hackers. Now, let's understand how deception technology evolved over the years and also its advantages. 
Now, honey pots were introduced in the year 1998. Honey pots are these small devices which are placed in the network. So, when the attacker tries to access those areas, an alert will be sent to the system administrator stating that intruder is trying to access a particular portion of network illegally. The next honey nets were introduced in the year 2000. Uh, honey nets are nothing but the network of honey pots. Then honey token were introduced in the year 2003. Honey tokens are the small piece of uh, information which is embedded in the real information, say for example the database. When somebody steals the uh, records, they are also stealing this honey token. So when this is stolen. It sends the message to the system administrator saying that the data has been stolen and how it has been stolen. Okay, so it helps in investigation of the uh, stealing of the records. Then in 2012, Honeypot 2.0 technology was introduced which is much, much advanced compared to the Honeypots introduced in the year 1998. Then reception technology was introduced in the year 2016. Now reception technology has got some advantages. One is increased accuracy, then next is minimal investment and finally the future ready. So it is even applicable to the new technology. Okay. So it works fine with the existing technology, but even when we adopt the new technology, not much changes are required. We can adopt it very easily and quickly. And this is the first tool which we are going to discuss today, that is WebTrap. WebTrap is designed to create a deceptive web pages to deceive and redirect attackers away from real websites. So the deceptive web pages are generated by cloning real websites, specifically their login pages. So the WebTrap consists of two tools, one is the web cloner and second one is the deceptive web server. So what web cloner does is it clones the real websites and creates the deceptive web pages. And what a deceptive web server does is it serves the cloned web pages and reports it to the syslog when somebody tries to access the cloned web pages. So these are the commands which you can use and these are dependencies which you need to install if you want to work with web track. So presently it works fine with the Ubuntu 18. clone uh, any website, you need to use webcloner.py. So it takes two parameters, one is the output directory and second one is the website URL. You can also see the example at the bottom of this slide. So the first parameter is the Wikipedia login page, that's the folder. And second one is the website URL which we want to clone. So when cloned, the clone pages will uh, reside in Wikipedia login page folder. The next is the trap server.py file. So this will be used whenever somebody wants, somebody tries to access the files from Wikipedia login based folder. So when he tries to access the file from this folder, an alert will be sent to the system administrator and the entry will be made to the syslog server. Then there is a the next tool that is demo hunter. So this is used to create low interaction honeypot servers and then agents plus the managers. Now Demon Hunter allows you to create your own honey net all customized by yourself from post protocol handlers. That means you can use your own ports, you can use your own protocols and it is not compulsory that you should use the same protocol everywhere in the network. You can use combination of protocol for example for first honeypot you can use TCP, for another honeypot you can use HTTP for third honeypot you can use FTP. So it is not mandatory that you should use the same protocol. So you can use any protocol anywhere. You can use any port number anywhere with respect to demo hunter. Then why we developed the deception tool? We know that cyberspace is a national asset and due to pandemic, uh, it is becoming even more important. So. Now XML is the heart of many mainstream technologies, 
such as web services, service center, architecture, cloud computing, micro services, or even our uh, mobile applications. So these vulnerabilities can be present at various levels and at various locations, such as operating system, network database, web servers, application server, application port, and XML appliances. And whenever new technology is uh, are introduced, it comes with uh, new challenges. So when I say new challenges, old challenges also exist, plus some new challenges will also be introduced. So to give an example, let's consider the example of SQL injection. So we know that SQL injection attacks can perform on RDBMS database. Now when we replace RDBMS with the XML file, the same uh, kind of attack vector can be used to attack our XML data. So in this case, it is called export injection, not SQL injection. But the procedure and attack vector remains the same. Next, so what we have done in our project is to secure web services from export injection attack using modular recurrent neural networks. And what solution we proposed is a modular recurrent neural network architecture to identify and classify a typical behavior in user input. Once a typical user input is identified, the attacker is redirected to fake resources to protect the critical data. So now to do this, we developed our own input validation technique that is known as count based uh, validation technique. which works on the frequency of characters in the user input. So how it works, we'll discuss it in one of our next slides. So to begin with, we need to understand how expert injection works. Now you can see here this is an XML file which stores the valid data. Okay, so that means legal username and legal password and the account type is stored. Now below you can find there are two lines, one is displayed in uh, blue color and second one is displayed in red color. So in this case what happens is if you observe the uh, line which is highlighted in uh, blue color, here valid username and password have been used. Whereas in the uh, last line where it is highlighted in red color, you can see that some unusual uh, strings have been used which uh, has boolean operators and some unwanted strings like equal to so this is nothing but the attack vector so that's why this is a malicious query and this is how expert injection attacks are performed now why expert injection or SQL injection is very dangerous is you can see here there are two parameters, one is the attacker skill and second one is the typical likelihood of exploit. So attacker skills required are very low. That means any beginner or a script kid will be able to oh, form the attack vectors and typical likelihood of exploit is very high. So what we had done is we had referred some uh, research papers uh, to see whether uh, any similar work has been done. So we found that no similar work was done and we also wanted to uh, ensure that the method which we are using that is the modular neural network has given uh, positive results. And in our survey we found that modular neural network is giving the positive results with respect to the response time. So, Neural network approach to identify and classify a typical behavior in input was not used earlier. So the study showed different approaches to handle expert injection attacks. It also showed methods applied and their disadvantages. So we can conclude from the study that neural networks are not applied to detect expert injection attacks and existing results are not promising. So in many cases we found that response time was uh, not at all in acceptable range. So it was in terms of minutes, not in terms of seconds. So the study showed how modularity in case of neural networks helps to achieve improved performance 
modern neural networks have not been applied to cyber security, particularly to the detection of SQL or XPath injection attacks. Now, in this slide, you can see uh, it explains the system design. So, we are basically uh, have three tiers. One is the presentation tier, then business tier, then the data tier. So, in presentation tier, you have the user interface through which user or attacker is going to enter the info. If he is a user, he will input, he will input uh, valid input. If he is a malicious user, then he will enter malicious inputs. Now in business tier, the user input will be processed, business logic will be written and executed. And you can see here our uh, different neural network is hosted at business tier. So which does the main job of classification and serves the data, whether it is real data or fake data from a data tier. So based on the classification. Mm -hmm. The next, our uh, third tier is the data tier, which stores uh, three kinds of data. One is the real XML data, the second one is the fake XML data, and third one is the custom error messages. If we move to our extreme left, again you can see that the examples of valid input, malicious input, and email input have been mentioned. Now the examples of valid inputs are email ID, mobile number or any alpha which word. Then similarly you can see that some malicious inputs have been mentioned. Note here that this is just a small uh, example but there is a huge list of malicious inputs which you can actually construct. The next user may or the attacker may also enter the invalid input that is because he wants to fetch the more information maybe he is not getting the information about the system so he will enter some invalid input when he enters the invalid input it is going to generate the error message I note here that many times these error messages also reveal a lot of information say for example which browser the uh, server is using or which server the server is using which operating system the server is using what is the fault number so this data may be sufficient or he may use this information to frame the next attack vector. So in this case, it becomes very important to hide these error messages. So in this case, custom error messages will come to our rescue and hide the information or hide the system errors. Now, this is the algorithm uh, on which our the entire application is based. So, this incorporates the count based validation technique. Now, you can see here there is a table 4 that is situated at uh, bottom right corner. So, where some special characters have been displayed, including the alphabets and digits, and also the threshold has been mentioned. So, you can see here uh, number of dots allowed are maximum 2. Because alphabets or digits, they can be any number. Of course, there is a length limit. Okay, but some special characters like brackets, round brackets, they are not allowed. So it is clearly mentioned that the threshold is zero. So similarly, based on the threshold value and based on the character, their post have been. So the first step, what we are going to do is we are going to scan the user input. That is, user will enter the input and determine the length of the user input. Then count the frequency of every character the user input, including alphabets, lowercase alphabets, uppercase alphabets, digits, and special characters. Then check if the frequency of the character is below the threshold value as mentioned in the table 4. So if it is below the threshold value, then set the error code to 40, that means it's a valid input. Else, now in the next step, check the frequency of special characters. If it is above the threshold value, then set the code as 4000. Okay. Else, set the error code to 400. So that means it is invalid. Now, the next step is to build neural networks. So as we have said, we are going to, or we have built modular neural network. That means we are, have not used a single neural network. Instead, we have used multiple neural networks. 
where the output of one neural network becomes the input of another neural network. Okay. So you can see here in table 1 and table 2, these two are two different neural networks. So first uh, uh, neural network is trained on number of login attempts. Okay. And second uh, uh, neural network is trained on the error course. Now to build a recurrent neural network, the configuration we consider is 15 neurons which should appear as long short term memory network and output layer as softmax. Then resilient propagation, back propagation and neural network algorithm was used to train the data set. Okay. Uh, the similar the test data set uh, created in real time was used to validate against the train data set. Then next, if training error and the test error both error of the both the networks are 0.0 percent, then classify the input of classify the input vector based on the outputs of both the neural networks in table three. So we will see the content of table three in the next slide. So if the input is successfully classified as valid, then serve the data from the real XML file. If it is classified as malicious, then serve the data from the fake XML file. Else, if it is classified as invalid, then return the custom error message, not the system error message. Okay, so you can see here, in the first column we have the output of neural network 1, in the second column we have the output of neural network 2, and third one is the final classification. And note here that if both are valid, then only it is considered as valid, in all the cases, it is either malicious or invalid. If with respect to valid and malicious, if one of them is malicious, then it is considered as malicious. In case of valid and invalid, if one of them is invalid, then it is considered as invalid. In case of invalid and malicious or valid or malicious, it is malicious. Now to implement, we used a Python package to implement the neural network, to implement web services, we use Bottle Pi Micro Web Framework and the web server was WSGI reference server of Bottle Pi and the Apache. Then we used two web browsers to test our user interface. The scripting language uh, was used Python. The NumPy and Matplotlib libraries were used to draw the graphs. So PyBrain is a modular uh, machine learning library for Python. So Python is short for Python based reinforcement learning, artificial intelligence and neural network library. So to, to download and install PyBrain, you can just follow the uh, URLs given in this slide. And there are very nice tutorials on this uh, site. You can follow it and you can build your own network using PyBrain. The next is the Bottle Py, that's the Python web framework. It is a fast, simple and lightweight microwave framework for Python. It is distributed as a single file module and has no dependencies other than Python standard library. So this is very very important. You just need to uh, download the file and start using its modules. So no need to install or configure. So it includes the important features of any web framework. So that is routing, templates, utilities and servers. And it does not depend on any external library since it was based, it was built on the Python standard library. Okay, you just need to download Bottle Pi and input in your project directory and start coding it. So this is the URL you can follow for more information. Now these are the results. So that is the you can see a comparison of two positives with respect to modular neural network and single neural network. So to Compare the results, we implemented two versions, one is a modular neural network version and second one is the single neural network version and res results were recorded and you can see here the results are more stable with respect to modular neural network where it is unstable with respect to single neural network. Then similarly with respect to false positives, you can observe the similar trend so our model neural network is performing better compared to single neural network. So same with the true negatives and uh, 
false negatives. So next is response time. So you can also see that when we have used modular neural network, so our results are better, we are saving time. But when we use single neural network, it is taking more time. So basically the ratio is 1 test to 1.5. So our modular neural network takes less time, that is because uh, the input samples to be trained are less. Okay, in case of single neural network, what happens is there will be lots of uh, permutation and combinations of the input so that we can avoid in modular neural network. Now this is summary of results. So you can observe here uh, we have modular neural network and single neural network with outlier and with outlier. So in both the cases, uh, our modular neural network architecture is performing better and giving us the better results. Now let's have a look at the snapshots. So you can see here in this slide we have two files. One is data.xml which stores the real data and second one is the fake data.xml file which stores the fake data but it looks like the real data. So just for our understanding I have added the keyword fake. So this is the user interface for our application. The next if user enters valid username and a password, it says that login successful, that means uh, he has been granted access to the real system. Then, next, in this case you can observe here the attack vectors. User has not entered the valid input, he has entered the malicious inputs. So in this case, uh, after 4 login attempts, okay, up to 3 login attempts, it will display that login failed, but after three login attempts or more than three login attempts, it will start disclosing the data, but it will be a fake data. So this gives the false impression to the attacker that he has been successful in uh, uh, gaining access to the system, but in reality it's not. And also note here that in the bottom right corner we are also fetching the information of a user, whoever is trying to access our system. So what information is captured here, remote port, remote address, then the method used, then the browser used, then also the query string used. And also you can see here the number of login attempts are also reported. Okay. So when all this combination of input is considered, so our system classifies it as uh, uh, malicious and it displays the fake data. So you can see that uh, now attacker is going to enter fake data and he will gain access to some system but it is the access to the fake system which looks like a real system. So the conclusion is that our solution offers input security over existing methods by misleading the attacker to false resources and customer pages. Our results also show that the system accepts the estimate input although the user input may contain some special characters and rejects only truly malicious inputs. So our solution combines modular neural networks and account-based validation approach to filter the malicious input. So it has also resulted in increased average detection rate of true positives and true negatives and decreased average detection rate of false positives and false negatives. Then the security system has to be successful every time, but attacker has to be successful only once. So this is, an, this is a very very important statement. So through deception, I can say that we are not providing 100% security. Instead, we are buying extra time to protect our resources from the hackers. So these are the references you can refer for more information and more concepts. Thank you.